I need to do a little check thing first here. Uh, okay, it was just a click. Uh, there. Yes. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> My name is Sybil, and I'm a fabric junkie. I love fabric. I, I want to speak, oh, excuse me, I'm not very used to public speaking, but I love fabric, and the thread of my talk is the development of this love of fabric from textiles to paper and then to artist books. I began as a painter, painting on canvas, and then I painted textiles, creating my own yardage, custom hand-painted yardage. This pa passion of mine uh, led me to painting on paper and then making artist books, which combine image and text in a book form. Um, I have a little clicker, which I, there. Um, fabric is everywhere in our lives, both a necessity and a luxury. We wrap our bodies in it, we sleep on it, under it. It serves as our armor to protect us. It can express our identity or personal style. It pleases us via the touch and sight. Every culture weaves and their identity into it, and it does their surface design on it. Here we have a Mexican embroidery <coughs> and these beautiful headdresses from Chiapas, which have ribbons and make you feel festive. Quilts hold stories of other times and places, often passed down through generations. They're memory vessels. Clothing also retains memories. Fashion is the global industry that creates the clothing we all wear, and from, pla from the practical to the fanciful. As Bill Cunningham said when he was awarded the uh, Legion of Honor in France, he said, uh, he's the New York Times fashion photographer, he said, fashion is the armor that to survive the reality of everyday life. Oh, I use the clipper. <laughs> One of my personal favorites is Fortuni, where fabric and fashion are fused into, uh, are combined, and he created a master, uh, he would work with fabric and did beautiful uh, new inventions in dyeing and hand print printing fabric. He was a Spanish artist who lived in Italy in this palazzo where he did his work. <coughs> and this is uh, the, um, the work of Isabelle de Borges-Grave, who was a Belgian artist who worked in paper. Who, she's alive, she works in paper. And this is where I say Fortuny, uh, Isabelle de Borges-Grave meets Fortuny. This was an exhibit at the um, at his palazzo where she recreated everything in paper. And um, I was fortunate enough. This is it, on the right is his Delphos dress, and all everything you see in this slide is paper that she painted and then cut and and fabricated. And this is uh, some of her other work, which I was fortunate enough to see it in San Francisco, where she had a show called Pulp Fashion, which is the merging also of paper and fashion. And she recreated all the um, Medici's in one room and uh, Chanel in another. And it was um, a sensual delight. This is a uh, Fortuny fabric that um, is real, uh, not out of paper. And, but here it's rendered as the Fortuny range in, in uh, etching uh, by Max Elliott, an artist in San Diego. And he used the uh, quality of the fabric to make his imagery. 
And there I am. <laughs> um, it's, uh, see, I've always loved fashion and fabric and clothing. And I'm, I'm just thrilled to get this new dress. Then uh, seven decades later, I still love clothing and fashion and fabric, but I didn't want to make um, uh, clothes. It just didn't excite me. But I loved having fabric and making paintings with fabric. So I made baby quilts where I pieced together various fabrics and uh, made uh, designs, or collages, so to speak, in fabric. So this is uh, Fortuny fabric in the background, and then this uh, water baby fabric floating in the middle, and Mary Mecca. So I was fusing different cultures and worlds in one quilt. This is a constant use in my baby quilts, this wonderful Clarence House fabric called Water Babies. And then I, so I, as I said, I didn't want to make clothing, so I ended up working in the design business and making hand-painted quilts for adult beds. People saw the baby quilts and they said, oh, please, can I have one on my bed? So this was um, hand-painted and then quilted. And then they were used in different forms. Uh, this one ended up as in, on the wall at some showroom. And actually, Clos de Bois Winery. <laughs> this is another um, example of that. And then I made hand-painted yardage, because I couldn't always find the fabrics I wanted to piece. And that brought me to having to do math. I had become a painter. Be uh, thinking I could, uh, I had wanted to be an architect. And then it, I realized we needed a lot of math for architecture. So I ended up uh, saying, well, I'm going to go into art. I don't need any math for that. And I spent every day doing algebra problems and figuring out how much yardage I need or how many pieces of paper to complete a project. So you never escape math. Um, this more geometric quilts, baby quilts. But you can see tucked in there is the water babies. And this is a pieced uh, cyanotype uh, quilt using the grid motif, which I really like. And then this is a, uh, again, the grid motif, but now I've switched to uh, using etching and prints and making a quilt out of the print to paper rather than fabric. So we're having a transition from fabric to paper. And um, this is an example of also a, a printed quilt by Jim Mahachek. And um, Now I want to talk about artist books. And artist books are, because in the 1990, I slipped from uh, fabric only to, I took a, a book arts course. And I, um, I fell in love with the idea of making uh, books. An artist book is um, text, structure, and image. And the artist um, uses the book as his form of expression. Well, the way a painter uses a um, painting to make a painting, or a sculptor uses a sculpture to make a, uh, to, to express himself, the book becomes the form. And um, then there's all there's text, structure, and image in a book in an artist book, and often we can take it to one extreme or another. And this is an example of what we call an altered book, where uh, the artist Sally Hagee Boyer has uh, wrapped a rolling pin and put it through a book. It's called Smooth, and it's a definitely an altered book. And this is Jeannie Shank, who has made out of tar paper the um, folios that uh, this is a sculptural piece. And it's quite large and in a, 
very big gallery. I think this is at Cal Poly. And this is an example of a letterpress book where um, one would, I, I think I'll show the real thing also, where the book, the book is no longer a book form, but it becomes sculptural. And this is called Tutte Due, where um, the Italian and English translation of the poem, the English being in blue and the red is Italian. Oh, wrong way. We're having a review. <laughs> um, these are different views of the book. And so I had gone from fabric to, um, which is so soft and sensual, to working with um, lead type and setting all of this, uh, the text in uh, letterpress, which is a, a hand set and this lead type between um, the, the lines. And this is wooden type. And I collaborated in the year 2000, we started Bay Park Press, which is Jim Mahachek and myself, and we collaborated on a number of books. And this, again, is the, it's called the O is for Opera, which is, uh, we use the alphabet as our theme, and this O is for Opera. This is the back view. Um, again, the Fortuny fabric is an inspiration for the curtain screen uh, effect. And this is an overview, a, a, a shot from above. So the book opens up, and you can view it either individual pages or as one uh, complete unit. This is it, uh, one of the pages where you can see through. So I, I call it a pop-up book for adults. This is a, another collaboration called The ABC of Time. And uh, it's, we like big topics. Um, uh, this is, uh, each letter is depicted either, uh, this is the black holes, are the gates of time. And this is hand painted and then letterpress and uh, different forms of, of embellishment this page being the time clock where you, every uh, the, uh, when you punch in so we have made the cars to slip in and out and then another uh, passion of mine is gardens and flowers uh, when I was working in the quilt uh, fabric I would do endless <coughs> hand painted pillows of at bromeliads and different flowers, and so Ms. Mr. Mahachek and I decided that we would uh, do the Gardens of Delight, which each one of them is hand uh, a rainbow roll, we called, and then uh, printed on top. Um, so they all uh, are individual folios, and then they go in a box. This is the uh, Primordial Garden, which is um, each poem, uh, each page has a poem, and this is a Nanda Mayamar on this poem. The Japanese Garden, and I can read you that poem because it's uh, when winter chrysanthemums go, there's nothing to write about but radishes. <laughs> um, Water has always been one of my themes. So there's some hand-painted yardage years ago, and then when I moved into the book world, I did the water book, La Jolla Cove. And it's this is a Japanese stab binding, uh, and it's um, silk cover and letter press. These are the, uh, I did unique mylar paintings throughout uh, the book. And there, um, uh, it was an interesting process because I had to use uh, oil-based inks uh, to create the feeling of water. So I like the idea of water and uh, water and uh, oil don't mix. They they worked for me. 
This is, um, I breathe in, I breathe out. These were all meditations when swimming. Uh, so each page had a different etching, an uh, intaglio print. And then I went to pool swimming. Uh, so this is the water book, Lanes of Thought, which is uh, a, long, a longer book, because the pool is. And I made a, a little pool for it to live in, the box, which is another part of artist books, the, how the containers that they stay in can also become a big part of the, of the book. So these long lanes have the laps underneath and one, two, three, and then try not to lose count. And this some of the thoughts I had while swimming. But then you lose count, and it all <laughs> transcends. <laughs> This is all done with the letterpress, uh, trying to get the, the lead type to dance. And then I have this um, book that's called, If You Dive Deep Enough, You Can Touch the Stars. And um, that's what I've tried to do in my uh, work. <laughs> and. Um, I started by uh, working with fabric as a medium of beauty, and now I work with paper, which I adore, and I, um, I like the quote, he who seeks beauty will find it, and that's the end.